Uh, On the words of Dr. A. P. J. Abdul Kalam, all of us do not have equal talent, but all of us have an equal of opportunity to develop our talents. Good evening to one and all. My name is Noora Fatima, student of 1 DC BAHRM, and I will be the host for today's section. It gives me an immense pleasure to welcome you all for this lecture series. And today we are privileged to have Ms. Anjali Viraj, Senior Researcher Associate at Ashoka Trust in Bangalore. Well, we will be discussing on one of the goals of sustainable development that is sustainable cities and communities. But before we start our section, it's significant to involve the Almighty. Therefore, I invite Insha for the prayer. I invite Insha for the prayer. Nan madu pi ayadhi zamini nirakku vandanam sneharu pi ayadhi zamini nirakku vandanam nan madu pi ayadhi zamini. Our section. I would like to invite Ms. Alina Joy, HOD of HRM Department, our mentor, to give an introduction about today's section. Thank you, Neura. So, this is our fifth day of International Lecture Series on UN Sustainable Development Goals. I'm really happy to have you all here. So, let me welcome all of you to the session. Without any delay, let me introduce uh, the resource person of today's session, Ms. Anjali Viraj. Anjali Viraj is a natural science researcher from Kerala, India, currently working on solving issues related to water and wastewater management at Ashoka Trust for Research in Ecology and the Environment. It is an environmental think tank in Bangalore, India. She has a bachelor degree in chemistry and a master's degree in environmental science. She has briefly interned with Swachada Mission, a local self-help government organization in Kerala, and examined the ground level application of national policies on solid and liquid waste management in India. She has over four years of professional experience in interdisciplinary research, looking at issues related to water and sanitation. Her expertise lies in developing and monitoring decentralized water and wa wastewater treatment systems and nature-based solutions for low-income settings. She has published research outputs in peer-reviewed publications and has written many scientific articles for non-specific audience to bridge science with the community. Her key interest lies in developing solutions to tackle growing plastic waste generation in developing countries like India. So because of that last sentence, her key interest in developing solutions to tackle growing plastic waste generation in developing countries like India. That is why Ms. Anjali Raj is with us today. So we welcome Anjali to take over the session. Thank you so much for your valuable time with us. Thank you. Over to you, Anjali. Thank you for organizing this event, first of all, Alina, and thank you for introducing me. And thank you, Noora, for the introduction. Thank you, uh, uh, Insha, for the beautiful prayer. And as Alina mentioned just now, I have been working on a different field and I'm presenting on a different field. So it might be an irony 
but uh, I like to present on this uh, field specifically. That's why I chose this topic. And uh, so today I'll be presenting on circular economy in plastics, goals and uh, practices. I hope my screen is visible. Right, Alina? Yes, yes. Hello? Yes, yes, the screen is visible, Anjali. Yeah. So when I'm speaking about circular economy, I am talking from an observer's perspective, a third person's view. So I might have made a certain amount of mistakes in my presentation. So I would expect you to pardon that. And with all this disclaimer in place, I would like to start my presentation. So as you can see in the in the welcoming slide, uh, the chart. So this gives the gist of circular economy itself. Uh, itself in broader terms and it is a system which replaces the traditional concept of end of use end of life uh, concept so circular economy it's not a term coined by someone it's it's a concept that emerged out of boldings uh, kenneth e boldings book called economics of coming spaceship earth published in 1966 so in his book he says that earth is bounded by four walls with limited assimilative capacity and economy and environment sh should coexist exist in equilibrium. Now, European Union has drawn out a similar uh, definition for circular economy as a system that replaces end of life with reduction, reusing, recycling, recovering materials in production chain, distribution and consumption chain. Now, we have been following linear economy model for a while now. Still, we are following that in linear economy. Uh, we mine materials, raw materials, we produce something usable out of it. Finally, when, once the use is it, it's used, it's thrown away. So this, this is a traditional system that follows take, make, use and dispose plan. The value is created in this model by producing as many products as possible and raw materials is uh, handled in such an in, efficient way without any consideration about conservation. While, as opposed to this, in circular economy, there are key uh, three principles that focuses on elimination of uh, pollution and plastic waste degeneration, circulation of products and materials at their highest value to elongate their life cycle, and then uh, regeneration. In circular economy, the term waste itself is non-relevant. Um, it, the waste is always a new raw material for something new. Circular economy in plastic means uh, plastic waste is in general prevented and when it is generated it is collected sorted recycled and transformed into something new and this concept generally tries to break a linear model of take make use and dispose now coming to the sdg goals i know this lecture series is on sustainable development goals and you have been hearing a lot of these goals now i'm trying to correlate between circular economy in plastic and SDG, how achieving one can achieve the other. So uh, through achievement of circular economy in plastic, we are in turn um, uh, contributing towards the achievement of five major goals directly. That is uh, industry innovation in infrastructure, goal number nine, uh, development of new technologies and infrastructure for collection, sorting, recycling of plastic waste which is critical to the success of circular economy. And this will support the development of innovation, innovative and sustainable products. And goal number 11, through circular economy, it can play an important role in achieving sustainable cities and uh, communities by promoting responsible management of plastic, uh, reducing litter, enhancing cleanliness, improving the environment, the general environment and quality in the, in the urban areas. And also, circular economy uh, in plastics promote responsible consumption. And whenever it's possible to reduce, we reduce the consumption of plastic. And if it cannot be avoided, then we, uh, when, then we think about uh, recycling uh, and reusing plastic, reducing in, in minimizing the environmental impact of plastic waste production, which directly con contributes to goal number 12. Now, goal number 14, you might have heard a lot of news on how plastic waste is leaked into surface water systems like marine environment and uh, ocean, ocean systems and choking the life in this water system. So by preventing the flow of, through circular economy, we are preventing the flow of plastic waste into these systems, reducing the amount of plastic waste, entering the oceans and then preserving the ecosystem. Similarly, you might have seen a lot of dump sites and litter in and around your village or city. 
So this is affecting also affecting the wildlife and ecosystem. You can see a lot of stray animals like cows, dogs, etc., feeding on this uh, plastic waste, which is very unhygienic, and it could also lead to their death. So by promoting circular economy, we can reduce the amount of uh, uh, plastic waste which is getting leaked into these systems. Now coming to <clears throat> rules and policies in India that promote circular economy in plastics. Um, we can talk about Plastic Waste Management Rule 2016 and its amendments, where it specifies the responsibilities for various stakeholders, including the manufacturers, importers, uh, urban local bodies, waste generators, recyclers, for the collection and recycling of plastic waste. The National Plastic Policy 2020 aims to reduce the consumption of single-use plastic, also, it targets the reduction of uh, plastic waste, development of alternate material, <clears throat> development of new innovation and research in plastic sector, etc. The Swachh Bharat Mission, Swachh Bharat Abhiyan, the Clean India Mission that you might all have heard of, is a campaign launched by the government to promote cleanliness. And one of their key goals is to reduce the amount of plastic waste which is being littered in the country and to promote recycling of uh, plastic waste. Swachh Bharat Mission. Grameen or even urban in its second phase includes uh, solid waste management in general, sorting <clears throat> segregation of dry and wet waste and then properly managing uh, dry and wet waste. Now, EPR, Extended Producer Responsibility Scheme, it is part of Plastic Waste Management Rule 2016 and the 20 second, uh, 2022 amendment of this rule specifies a proper guideline to follow EPR. So EPR is a scheme that mandates uh, manufacturers, producers and importers to take responsibility of end of life management of the plastic they produce, which is a fair deal. And this includes collection, sorting, recycling of plastic waste. Finally, the National Clean Energy uh, Fund is, is, is a it, it's a uh, it's a program to promote clean energy and sustainable development in India. This fund provides financial incentives to support initiatives that uh, look at reducing environmental impact of plastic production and disposal, including promoting circular economy. So there are uh, this is just a few of them. There are a lot of policies and rules in India which supports plastic economy, but uh, these are still at nascent stage. But still, there are a lot of efforts underway to contribute to circular economy in plastic. Now, coming to plastic demand and use, as you all know, plastic is an intrinsic part of our daily life. The versatility, the durability, especially the low cost, the economicity of plastic makes it an ideal material for packaging, transportation, agriculture, any industry you take. The favorable cost to benefit ratio and the versatile uh, range of application encourages the growth of plastic waste in general. So the major reason for plastic uh, growth of plastic consumption and use is the growth in the end-use segments and higher penetration of plastics into various industries, including agriculture, medical industry, infrastructure, packaging, importantly, etc. But <clears throat> these benefits of plastics are handicapped by mismanagement of plastic, so which results in uh, plastic being ending up in landfills and uh, clogging the drains flooding, breeding of diseases, etc. Packaging, as I mentioned, is the one of one of the largest area where plastic is used. So ease of recyclability must become a critical factor when we consider about, consider about plastic being used in packaging industry. So as you can see in this chart, uh, there is 10 point, approximately 11% increase in the production and consumption of plastic every financial year. So um, with urbanization, plastic is widely used. So over the years, the plastic consumption has grown significantly, aided by the population growth. India, when compared with the other um, developed nation, the per capita plastic consumption annually is very low. But owing to our high population and general lack of uh, infrastructure for management of plastic, it has become a burden to us. So plastic waste, which is being generated, as you can see in this pie chart, mostly it is being used in the packaging industry. For the downstream activity, the Energy Research Institute estimates that um, almost out of the total plastic which is being consumed in a year, uh, almost 42% per, uh, of consumption remains in the chain for at least one year. 58% comes out as waste. And out of this 58%, 
about 60% is collected and uh, some of it is recycled. 8.5% ends up uh, in energy recovery, while almost about 32% is mismanaged, which means it ends up as legacy waste everywhere, littering all the places, and also en ending up <coughs> openly burned. And also, the funny fact is that in the even if we have a lot of recycling happening uh, for producing new plastic product, 95%, 90% of feedstock materials still virgin plastic. Only 10% is satisfied by the recycled polymers in plastic production. So existing waste manage management practices are actually unable to support the urban, the amount of waste we generate. This has become a major issue. So segregation is still lacking in India. <clears throat> which is leading to the contamination of potentially recyclable materials like say PET bottles, uh, glass, metal with organic waste, which deems the recyclable material into non-recyclable material ending up as legacy waste. So contaminated low value plastics like single use plastic, packaging industry plastic like uh, the plastic which is used for uh, covering um, uh, food packaging like uh, chocolates, biscuits, etc they usually do not even get collected, recycled, or uh, reutilized. They get mismanaged. This waste mainly consists of very low value uh, single-use plastic. And there is no economic incentive uh, to capture and prevent the leakage of this uh, non-recyclable fraction from ending up in the environment. And as you can see in this chart, this is also study conduct by, conducted by Theory. With the sing ban of single-use plastic, we can see the drastic reduction in the consumption of uh, single-use plastic. Now, taking all this into consideration, Terry itself has developed a, a roadmap for circular economy in plastic with three main objectives. The first objective is to adopt sustainable material for uh, uh, developing um, solutions and dematerialization of plastic products. Second objective is to increase the supply of good quality secondary plastic feedstock material that is recycled plastic. And third objective is to invest and innovate and encourage alternative um, uses for difficult to recycle plastic. The difficult to recycle plastics includes uh, styrofoams, the packaging that uh, um, comes with the food like uh, biscuits, chocolates, etc. Etc. So I'll be discussing about how personal and community level initiative can help in achieving objective one and two through how through informal sector integration we can achieve objective two and how through social enterprises we can um, encourage objective, objective one, two and three. Now coming to the personal level behavioral changes, I know most of you might have been already practicing all of this. So uh, with the interest of time, I will just scan, uh, scan through this. So individually, we can, the small changes in our lives, we can collectively make big impact. First of all, reducing the plastic use. So whenever possible, we can uh, take uh, reusable bags, cutleries, etc., to prevent the amount of plastic waste we generate or encouraging production of uh, plastic waste. Second, if, if plastic waste, if the purchase of plastic uh, is unavoidable, then the next step would be uh, recycle it properly. This means sorting plastic waste by different type and also making sure that it's not contaminated with organic waste before disposing it into recyclable bin. Or in India, we can say before giving it to informal sector like rag pickers, scrap dealers, or even the municipalities which come to collect um, plastic, used plastic. And third is uh, avoiding single-use plastic. By this, we can help reduce the demand for single-use plastic uh, and then support uh, plastic recycling uh, programs. So whenever there is community-level uh, recycling initiative, supporting these businesses that use recycled, recycled plastic can encourage them. And then importantly, choosing uh, products made, made out of recycled practice, uh, plastic. So when we purchase uh, and when we choose products made out of recycled plastic, we support circular economy. This helps in generating a general market value or demand for recycled plastic, and this promotes use of sustainable material. And finally, uh, importantly, educating others, sharing knowledge and raising awareness about importance of use, recycle, reduce, uh, reducing plastic is an important way to su uh, support circular economy. 
Now coming to community level interventions, community can actually play a significant impact on promoting circular waste, circular economy in plastic. So this can be done through community recycling programs where community work together to establish a local recycling uh, program that collect and sort plastic waste, uh, including setting up a community level recycling bill uh, bins, um, then uh, gener in generating behavioral change in terms of uh, plastic waste management or disposal, community plays an important role. Um, this can be achieved through, uh, you know, public awareness campaigns, school programs, li like whatever is done now here. So something like that. And also a community can play an important role in cleaning up campaigns, like um, organizing litter collection cleanup efforts to reduce plastic waste in public spaces like parks, uh, beaches, etc. And then community can also play a key role in promoting uh, plastic free initiatives. You know, you might have seen a trend of eco friendly, uh, single use plastic free uh, weddings, uh, housewarmings, or any other initiative. So, if, if a community can acknowledge uh, and encourage people who have done that in the community, so it can also be a way to promote uh, other residents to also follow the same principle. Now, community can work with local businesses to encourage uh, the use of more sustainable materials. This could include encouraging businesses to use recycled plastic as their product and providing recycled bins to the customer so that they can uh, put their recyclable materials in the bin and then it is being delivered to the, to the small businesses. This way, community can contribute into small businesses. And finally, encouraging, um, I mean, educating and generating awareness among the, among the residents of the community. Now, uh, this is a successful initiative uh, done uh, in, a, in a village called Muhamma in Alapi, where uh, the village has been declared as first synthetic sanitary, uh, sanitary pad free village with the help of ATRI, the organization where I worked. Um, uh, it was successful, I mean, we were successful in, um, uh, in making the, uh, the women in that village uh, choose sust more sustainable sanitary options. Uh, so this didn't happen over a night. This happened <clears throat> with proper training, uh, generating awareness among the uh, women, uh, then giving them training camps, uh, then introducing them to sustainable products. What are the alternatives they, they do have uh, instead of sanitary, synthetic sanitary pads? So it's as you might know, in villages, it's actually very difficult to dispose uh, synthetic sanitary pads uh, because there is no... Um, formal system that comes and collects sanitary pads. So it would end up being dumped somewhere or uh, flushed or even burnt. So when you provide alternate options like menstrual cups or cloth pads, I think um, community is also willing to switch to that. So this is an example of that. Now coming to the main uh, people, the informal sector, they play a vital role in circular economy of plastic in India especially and in developing countries. While formal businesses have uh, typically are typically responsible for developing and implementing policies and practices related to waste management, informal sector provides valuable services in collection, recycling, and disposal of waste. So informal waste pickers are actually the first people who come in contact with the with the waste, and they are the people who reduce the amount of waste that is ending up as legacy waste in landfills and dump sites. So even before us knowing the value of circular economy, it has always been the informal sector who has known that there is wealth out of this waste. They have always practiced this even before I could say two or three decades. In India, I think even the people, uh, maybe uh, we have this conventional tendency of storing things, maximizing the uh, life cycle of a product. But now with the uh with the western culture uh, coming in we are more switching towards single use plastic or use and dispose method mm -hmm. cpcb the central pollution control board estimates uh, suggests that out of the plastic waste about 60 percent of it is <clears throat> collected and recycled and it is actually the informal sector um with the help of uh, urban local bodies and uh, local bodies of course that are doing this activity actually but there is a, there is still a lack of uh, structured integration of informal sector within the formal waste management system even having a lot of rules uh, mandating it 
but it is important to mention that when they are providing us these services it's also important to recognize and appreciate their work and recognize the challenges they face so informal sector um, waste pickers are often introduced to hazardous um, and unprotected environment their whole family even the children are exposed to very toxic environment which lead to even their deaths nobody is looking into that uh, or nobody has been i would i would say because now there are a lot of initiatives to do that also there is lack of access of formal systems lack of access to the formal system for waste collection and disposal and also um they also face a lot of social and economic exclusion from the community um, they have limited opportunity to of upward mobility in terms of status and also financially now having said that this is a small story <clears throat> i conducted uh, in bangalore about the rack pickers so the organizational structure of uh, and functioning of informal sector in recycling and in, uh, begins with the collection of <clears throat> collection of recyclable material from open dump sites or streets or directly from the source like if maids or uh, there are maids working in big apartments they collect recyclable material which are disposed in in those apartments and then after collection they bring uh, the recyclable material into local kabaddi walas or we can call scrap dealers or junk yards where almost five different types of waste are being collected like plastic Uh, paper glass uh, metal etc and from here with minimal processing like they'll shrink it for transportation is is in a sub transportation this is moved into larger aggregator so this trading is done in a very hierarchical manner and it's the value chain is very not very not very transparent and also it's very informal and that's the reason why the price there is always a price difference between different states or even within the locality and post recycling uh the recycled plastic in the form of pellet or granule is reintroduced into the market as secondary uh, raw material now um there is a lack of mechanical technology for recycling plastic by cutting shredding washing into granules flakes or pellets into crude material which can be later blended with uh with virgin material of superior quality and also due to lack of formal channels and proper uh, standard operating procedure or um, rudimentary recycling techniques there's always leakage of uh, uh, low value plastic from the recycling process uh, and also the finally fi the final product the flakes or the granules are often of inferior quality because they are contaminated with uh, different types of plastic waste this will reduce the market value of these recycled plastic there are um, there are a lot of uh, support system uh, in place to integrate the informal sector into into the and in, into the system and formalize uh, their role this includes providing access to the resources like personal protective equipment safe environments uh, working condition and then support in terms of skills and uh, business opportunities etc there are a lot of private organizations like kabali kabaddi wala connect kabaddi walas etc working towards this that's how next we can go to social enterprises social enterprises are businesses that prioritize social and environmental impact with financial profitability now unlike the traditional businesses profit businesses which primarily looks on uh, focuses on maximizing their profit over other social values uh social enterprises aims to create a balance between um, you know financial sustainability and uh, creating a positive social and environmental impact uh, this could be you know uh, reducing poverty reducing discrimination uh, environmental sustainability improving environmental sustainability so uh, such such as this and also Uh, they can be um, organization they can be profit organization they can be non profit organization they can be corporates etc they also work with uh, other like government organizations traditional uh, businesses etc now these can play the social enterprises um, they often generate revenue through the sale of goods they produce uh, or services and then re invest the profit they generate from this businesses back into the uh, into their system to further their social and environmental mission so they can uh, support circular economy in plastic 
by developing and implementing innovative solutions for collection, sorting, and recycling plastic. And they can also design, develop, and produce uh, products made, made out of recycled plastic and improve the demand for such plastic. Of course, they can generate awareness and education among the community, among the policy makers, among, the, among all the stakeholders within their community also. And also, they can collaborate with uh, government organizations, traditional businesses, other organizations to promote circular economy. This can include developing joint initiative or sharing expertise. If they have a technology, they can share that uh, expertise with the others. And also, they can leverage resources to achieve common goals. They also can provide social inclusion and empowerment for marginalized communities like scrap dealers, waste pickers, recyclers, etc., by providing them with sustainable livelihood and improving their um, their access to financial services. Some examples of such social enterprises are Chintan Environmental Research and, and Action Group, which works to improve the lives of uh, waste pickers uh, and promote recycling of waste in India. They provide training and other support to waste pickers. Goonj is another uh, social enterprise which improves the lives of underprivileged community by provide, collecting and distributing used clothes and other household items. Also, they have this recycling plastic waste into eco-friendly uh, products program. SARS Zero Waste is uh, an organization uh, uh, social enterprise in Bangalore which provides waste management uh, services to communities, businesses, etc. And also they help in um, you know, provide, uh, achieving um, uh, CSR goals and also um, EPR and uh, extended producer responsibility um, goals by the manufacturers. Waste va uh, warriors are, uh, are uh, the communities that works to reduce uh, plastic waste in India by promoting recycling and waste management practices. Uh, Green Worms is actually an initiative in Calicut. Uh, I'm, sh I'm sure you might have heard of it. They work in similar fashion as Sahas Zero Waste. And there is also something called urban trash in the southern part of Kerala, which works in similar fashion. And there is uh, one organization called Recycle, which works all over in India and also in Asia generally. And there is another category of social enterprises, <clears throat> which actually helps in tackling the objective number three of plastic circular economy uh, targets. So here, uh, Recharka, is an eco-social tribe that employs uh, rural women to upcycle single-use plastics like uh, you know uh, the chocolate pack, uh, chocolate uh, biscuit multi-layer packaging uh, etc into beautiful textile and crafts using traditional charka and handloom that's that's how the name re charka comes and these these single-use plastics are actually deemed to be very hard to recycle or non-recyclable but uh, Recharka is an initiative that um, tries to make something useful out of these uh, plastic waste. Now, coming to the sanitary pads. So recently, there is a startup. Uh, I think it gained this um, open check from uh, Shark Tank, which has been a, a very huge news all over the social media. So they have um, uh, they recycle sanitary napkins. Padcare's mission is to make modern sanitation choices. Uh, safer and recyclable for women across the world and uh, they manage about 120 currently they manage about 120 lakhs of uh, pad per year which is just one person but still it's a, it's it's something so they have this special collection bin and once it's full it's uh, trained personnel will come and collect it and then they have a patented technology uh, which can you know uh, se segregate into um, different materials that can be recovered and then it can be used to produce something new. Well, this is an interesting new post I saw on LinkedIn, uh, which is a good way to promote circular economy, I guess. So the PET, recycled PET bottles were converted into jacket by Indian uh, Oil Corporation Limited, and it was presented to the Prime Minister Narendra <coughs> Modi, uh, which kind of generates awareness about circular economy and uh, uh, recycling uh, in this um, generally. Of course, textile, uh, I mean, uh, T-shirts, shoes, etc. Uh, out of PET bottles are nowadays very common uh, in textile industries to meet their uh, corporate sustainability. Uh, big manufacturers like Decathlon, Levi's, um, Nike, etc. are also into this initiative. There are also different types of research innovations. So this is a, this is a recent post I saw where a formal Google employee um, used this technology uh, to develop a bio-based resource 
to produce plastic, replacing the petroleum-based feed material. And she produced a plastic uh, which is, she claims to be dissolvable. Uh, and it is produced out of kelp, which is a seaweed, and it's invasive in uh, some some part of uh, the world. So it, it's actually not contributing to biodiversity loss. But if it's if it's scaled, uh, maybe in the future it can cause problems. I don't know. So when we consider this initiative, we have to think it from four different aspe aspects, key factors, I would say. Whether these interventions or initiatives are scalable at, to a large extent, whether these initiatives are sustainable, of course, are these initiatives sustainable? And mainly, are these initiatives affordable to the general public? More often, this, uh, some of these initiatives are very expensive and they're not affordable to the common people, which hinders the purpose of this, uh, these products. And also, another key factor is profitability for the manufacturer to continue manufacturing this. If, if it's, uh, even if it's uh, socially or um, environmentally sustainable or contributing to the sustain whole sustainability circular economy, if it's a loss for the manufacturer, then there is no incentive for him or her to continue the process. So these four factors should be considered in every initiatives. <clears throat> uh, now coming to the bioplastic. So development of um, uh, renewable resource-based or bioplastics or bio-based materials may result in challenges linked to biomass availability, um, you know, uh, then a competition between land av availability for food, biomaterial, bioenergy production, etc. Currently, uh, with low uh, levels of production of bio-based plastic, it might not be an issue. But later, in the longer run, when the demand and production increases, these issues may become very relevant. Also, biodegradable plastics, um, if they are not easily identified and collected separately, they might get mixed with non-recyclable plastic and also the wet waste or, or uh, some other types of plastic, which could again cause a problem in the whole uh, waste management system. So with these challenges, I would also like to discuss some of the challenges in achieving circular economy in plastics. To make circular economy in plastic a reality, it's important to address some of the systemic challenges which already exist in the uh, linear economy. So we have, uh, which are like lack of technology and infrastructure for recycling, and then low value for recycled plastic, uh, need for, which, which all needs consistent and harmonized appro approach uh, in plastic management. Also, there is general lack of awareness among the public and policy makers about the benefits of circular economy in plastic and how it contributes to generating income and also how it contributes to achieving sustainable development goals. Um, more often, so in plastic production, there is always upstream, uh, upstream manufacturers and then downstream people convert the manufactured plastic into usable products. So recycling technologies for plastic waste are often expensive and unavailable in India. So this upstream manufacturers will always have access to state of the art technology. But when it comes to the downstream players, it's always very difficult or even expensive for them to adopt these technologies. This limits the ab <coughs> ability of recyclers to effectively process and recycle uh, plastic waste, which is being generated. And also I've been mentioning poor quality of recyclable plastic. The quality of plastic in India is often poor because of the contamination making it very difficult for the recyclers to effectively process and recycle uh, material and generate income out of it, generate market value. So it will automatically end up being landfilled or burned. So that's also an issue that needs to be con considered. You... Lack of, there is still lack of effective policy and regulation to support circular economy in a smooth way. This includes lack of regulation to ensure proper waste management, proper segregation and disposal lack of incentives to promote recycling of plastic. I have discussed about the challenges faced by the informal sector, <clears throat> which plays a critical role in production, recycling of plastic, yeah, recycling and um, promotion of circular economy. India. So in conclusion, like circular economy in plastic has like potential to address environmental impact of plastic waste in India, but it requires a sustained effort from all stakeholders, uh, including private sector, and more importantly, consumers. Because it's always uh, better to start from the grassroots level. Uh, from, uh, you know, in, upside down, or yeah, uh, to make a circular economy in plastic a reality. 
Now, going back to our sustainable development goals, uh, having discussed all these objectives and how different sector contributes to circular economy, I think we can add a few more goals which can be achieved through circular economy in plastic indirectly. For example, uh, by promoting circular economy in plastic, we reduce uh, the amount of noxious gases generated by burning plastic. So that in turn will reduce the illness and death from hazardous chemicals and pollution, which is basically the SDG3, good health and well-being. And then by uh, circular economy, we, we arrest the amount of uh, plastic waste which is being littered in um, water resources, but, and then we are protecting and restoring water resources from pollution. That is clean water and one goal, goal number 6.6, .6, target number 6.6 .6 of uh, uh, SDG 6, clean water and sanitation. And then through circular, circular economy in plastic, we promote policies to creation of jobs and growing enterprises like social enterprises, which leads to decent work and economic growth, which is goal number eight. And then finally, we also through circular economy, as I mentioned, we are recognizing the importance of informal sector. And we also uh, we also ensure that equal opportunity is provided and it discrimination is ended uh, through the promotion of economic economical political and um, uh, uh, social inclusion of different sectors which uh, leads to reduced inequality which is goal number 10. so um, i would like to uh, this is the end of my presentation and i would like to hear your opinion about circular economy in plastic and how it has been achieved in your area or have you seen uh, uh, you know intriguing things like um, social enterprises in your area and how informal sector works and how municipality deals with the plastic waste in your locality etc so thank you for being a patient audience all through my presentation uh, thank you all i'm uh, open to discussion now Thank you, ma'am, for your great section. Now, let's move on to the interactive section. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to ask. Good evening. Myself Nandana, second ECHRM. Hi Nandana. I uh, have a question. Yeah, yeah, sure. How can a city or community become sustainable? So, um, for a, a city or community to become sustainable, there are different angles. It can be sustainable in terms of wastewater uh, management. It can be sustainable in terms of plastic waste management, etc. So, I have I have discussed how. Uh, community or even personal level behavioral changes can contribute to circular economy. So in community, first of all, you can uh, generate awareness among the residents of a community on how we should reduce, uh, reduce the use of plastic waste, uh, reduce the use of plastics and then reduce the amount of plastic waste we generate. And then we can uh, develop initiatives to collect uh, and pro give training for them to segregate the plastic. If, if they generate pl plastic waste, then uh, ask them to segregate their plastic waste properly. And then we can uh, develop a system where the segregated plastic waste can be collected. And then uh, community can uh, liaison between um, informal sector or even social enterprises like I discussed, Sahas or anything, to manage this plastic waste which they generate properly. And also, like uh, uh, Alina, I've discussed uh, in the in the beginning, like uh, de developing something useful out of you know, textile waste, like uh, you know mats, etc. These are also contributing to uh, circular economy in plastics. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, Ansana, uh, I have a doubt regarding. In the coming days, we are planning to uh, conduct some sustainable activities in a ward or a panchayat uh, near to Calicut. So regarding this plastic waste, uh, are you actually what is happening present is like a corporation is uh, uh, collecting this plastic waste once in a month. In our home also, we are collecting this plastics and we are uh, separating this plastic like uh, uh, milk covers and all in one packet and this uh, chocolate covers and biscuit covers in another packet. So that is happening in this uh, Calicut area. So what we can suggest more for the residents uh, to get this 
circular economy of plastic or uh, any other suggestions you can put forward at um first of all if if you can find uh, you know um large uh, you know wholesale shops uh, where uh, uh, this grocery items can be purchased uh, in a larger quantity hmm. then uh, you can see even after banning single use plastic we can see if we go to a shopping mall even uh, even a grocery shop you can see everything is plastic uh, everything is already packed in uh, single use plastic so that is the main issue we are not tackling i guess we are banning the plastic carry bags but still we have a lot of plastic in and around us and it's always very easy to choose that over taking containers and then going to some shop and then uh, all this process so it making this process of carrying something along with you and then instead of using this already pre packed um, material going for this option uh, making this process easy would be an another alternative so if you have wholesale dealer, dealers uh, in in kerala especially we have a lot of wholesale shop where they have rice and all the commodities already there in bins and if we take initially there would be some hesitance and also mockery when we go with a with a container or even a plastic bag which we already have but then if a lot of people in the community start doing that then there is an encouragement for the dealer also and also uh, this would also encourage development of such systems where uh, we don't promote single use plastic people are already uh, you know they are comfortable with taking their own bags or uh, containers to uh, bring uh, things in bulk yeah some small steps like this and then recognizing if, if we have informal sectors anywhere like scrap dealers then then liaisoning between them uh, community if they have like kurmashri etc etc can play an important role in collecting and then giving it to these scrap dealers because they have their own chain dealing with the plastic waste as i said informal sector is the uh, may uh, plays a major role in actually recycling industry so we just need to connect them uh, once the plastic is produced if we if we can connect this generated waste with the recyclers like uh, informal sector then that could is the process of recycling very well instead of uh, you know kabadi walas etc going and collecting waste from that mixed waste dump site if the community can already keep that cleaned waste cleaned and segregated uh, used plastic and then give it directly to the dealers then that could also ease the process there okay another doubt i have uh, as part of upcycling this plastic there are plastics uh, <clears throat> it's there in the face wash and all so i heard in news like uh, uh, there is plastic content in human beings and especially in infants so this kind of upcycling will cause harm uh, for this human beings in a continuous way when we are using this all these products and all so uh, that's different from upcycling so these you are talking about the microplastic which is leaking exactly. Uh, exactly. out of the system yeah. that is because this already imbibed with plastic this upcycled plastic like you know mats or bags okay. etc okay. they have uh, they actually they are similar to how we use uh, normal bottles actually normal bottles or even face wash face wash etc are more harmful than upcycled plastic so of course there will be a leakage of you know microplastic from these system also uh, but uh, since I, i i told you this this is a very nascent stage in india so there ha haven't been a lot of studies on how uh, long term in long term this is going to affect us but i think um, you know uh, upcycling can also be uh, to an extent be a solution uh, to plastic waste problem but uh, uh, micro microplastics in water and uh, in our body is a different section which is a very a very broad section to uh, discuss also actually yeah uh, there are some questions in the chat box i think yeah sure, sure. um chat okay so if nan ahmed um is there any ways to reduce plastic rather than using cloth and paper bags switching from plastic containers to steel glass type of waste of course so as uh, so you know uh, nowadays the take away and um, ordering online has increased the amount of plastic waste which is generated in india significantly so if you go to a, a restaurant and instead of using 
instead of taking takeaway in their container instead if we go with our steel container which is also very safe option putting hot meal in a plastic however you can say it's a uh, food friendly everything but still there will be harmful effect out of it instead if we can switch into um, you know glass or even um, steel it's 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 a very sustainable option and so instead of buying plastic containers to store your uh, your uh, dals or even you know uh, other grocery items there is a leach leaching of uh, toxins from this plastic into the food food material so instead if we can adopt glass or steel containers it is it's a very uh, healthy option i would say um what are the obstacles for circular economy goals in industry and what can we yeah so in industry as i said there is there are downstream players and there are upstream players in industry so the downstream uh, the upstream poly, uh, polymer manufacturers are globally competitive and they have state of the art technology and they are very competitive in nature but the downstream processes you know they are very fragmented and they are always micro scale small medium units and uh, they have limited access to uh, these technologies which are very expensive and also if they come across some problem uh, like repair or something it's very difficult to access uh, uh, services also so that is one of the main challenge in uh, approaching circular economy in terms of industry so so options would be developing innovation within india than outsourcing this technology uh, from uh, other uh, countries we have a lot of technology uh, institutions which are very uh, very fast forward in technology like iits iis if, if we can uh, put more uh, incentives or uh, money into developing technology within our country that can also reduce the cost and importing charges services etc yeah um do cities and communities need to be urbanized to to be sustainable not at all um i think rural setting is itself in itself is uh, we can call very sustainable so we have been we have always been sustainable in india i think we have always uh, if we look at our traditions or convention we have never been a, a consumer consumer uh, um, mindset people we have always uh, a, it's sort of people where we extend the life of something so if we from if we look at our grandmothers or grandfathers they are they always uh, try to reuse something multiple times it's, it's it's actually the younger generation that are more into you know uh, use and dispose culture so we have to go back to our own culture where we have always been sustainable so, so we don't need modernization or urbanization to be sustainable i would say we have always been sustainable we have to just rethink on how to plan things um, in rural areas now plastic is entering but um, initially we have been using cloths for uh, carrying things or even jute bags i think we have been using jute bags uh, etc for um, buying groceries and items etc in rural areas so we have so that has been our practice conventionally but now we have switched into this modern practices so i would say we don't have to be urbanized to be sustainable now fatima has a question what are the challenges associated with plastic recycling how can they are yeah so the challenges in plastic recycling one is that we still don't have properly segregated waste which is uh, leading to contamination of non uh, contamination of recyclable material with a uh, non recyclable material or even organic waste so if you have a uh, pt bottle or any recyclable bottle but if you have some food or something in that then nobody is taking up effort to clean there is nobody to clean that up and uh, recycle it for you so you, you have to think that everybody is doing services so there is an extent to which they can go so it should be your as a consumer it should be your responsibility to provide cleaned and segregated plastic waste so when the plastic waste is non segregated and unclean it it gets contaminated and also it reduces the recycling value and also the quality of recycled product uh, so that is the main issue with india the quality of recycled pro products and also uh, no proper incentive for recycling but nowadays uh, as you have seen there are a lot of initiatives which i uh, i gave some examples with this a uh, lot of initiatives and uh, awareness among the community i think um, this issue is being addressed to an extent yeah 
Um, I don't think we have uh, more questions in the chat. If you have something to discuss. So as I mentioned, uh, green term. Hi, sorry. Uh, OK, uh, Anjali, we have another uh, teacher is there, Ms. Bintu. She is the head of the Department of uh, English. Ma'am. Hi, Bindu, ma'am. Good evening, ma'am. Thank you for joining with us. Just a second. Yeah. Hello. Uh, I thought there was something wrong with my connection. I wasn't able to see myself. Uh, oh. Good evening. Um, and it was so fascinating to listen to this. Uh, uh, Alina introduced me as the English teacher, and therefore it's something connected to, uh, you know, what we teach in the English classes that I would like to add. But before that, thank you very much for a very informative session, you know, which just uh, did not remain rooted in theory. You offered so many solutions, very practical, uh, easy to follow solutions. And I think that is the you know, essence that we look for in sessions like this. So I'm sure the impact that you have left with the session will go very far and the students will benefit immensely from this. Everyone, in fact, and uh, when everyone here, you know, gains, the whole world gains too. Uh, just, thank you. Yeah, thank you for introducing this concept of um, circular economy. You know, we know about it, but then it's when you talk about it that you get to know more about it as a theoretical and as a practical, uh, you know, thing. Uh, what I what fascinated me was the way in which it resonates so well, and it is so parallel to uh, what we teach in you know literature. We talk about the rigidity of linear narratives and how, uh, as you know, as we progress and as we uh, advance, we give up on these rigid linear narratives and go for circular plot, circular narratives and so on. And that is exactly what, uh, you know, you told us about the, from the linear, a linear models of economy to go to these circular models of economy, which is what the world needs and whether it is. So that also brings together, you know, the interdisciplinarity and the, the many, many uh, inter <coughs> points of connect between different disciplines. Uh, that that is the richness of this whole program. I carry, I mean, I take back a very valuable um, message from the session. Therefore, having established this beautiful contact between what I have been teaching for years and you know the subject like economics and human resources. Very very happy and, to hear that. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much. Pleasure is mine. Uh, I, I was wondering why um, you know we did, uh, you did not mention uh, options like using plastics for you know infrastructure development, tarring, and so on. Those kind of uh, practices are prevalent, right? I mean, were you specifically focusing on things that you could <coughs> immediately do? Yeah. So um, yeah, why I didn't mention that is because. It, it's, it's actually considered as the last option. So there is, so it's the end of the life there. So from that, there is nothing coming out. Oh, yes. Once you right. use a plastic for bitumen or the cement industry, it's it's ending there. So it right. cannot come back to the industry. Yeah, so yeah. It, it's it's not uh, it's not that it's it's not contributing to circular economy. But um, there are other options as well yeah. that we can uh, you know connect the loop yeah. and if. if uh, for example, if you are getting mixed waste and if there is no way to, um, you know, extract the recyclable from the non-recyclable, then we finally go for yeah. legacy. This is called legacy waste management, which okay. which in its, I did want to introduce this, but um, in the interest of time, yeah. I didn't have time to include the legacy waste management into yeah. this. So that is part of legacy waste management, where we look into options like refuse derived fuel or energy out of uh, ways or options like using this in cement industries or mm -hmm. like bitumen um, uh, laying roads etc mm -hmm. mm -hmm. which is also which has always been practicing but there are other options where we can recirculate plastic waste into new raw materials yeah 
so it's important to keep the circle going moving right yeah we should not seal it off yeah so this is sealing it off yeah we are gaining something out of it but still yeah. it's not circulating into the next step right right yeah. right that's precious <laughs> that input thank you and i think after hearing from her session we can popularize the usage of menstrual cup in our campus ma'am of course yeah. i wanted to say that specify that because I, i have been a user for almost 4 years and my all of my colleagues are also using i think in especially in rural areas it's very very you know practical option because in rural areas disposing sanitary pad is very difficult nobody is coming to collect waste like in urban areas so people end up dumping it somewhere or flushing it or eventually burning it so those are non sustainable option non healthy option so switching to menstrual cup is actually very sustainable and very easy option and it's also very hygienic as a user i can i can comfortably say that it's a very uh, very easy op option to switch but th there are a lot of stigmas around it which needs to be tackled that's where you know community and other awareness programs can fit in yes yes actually i also used this cup once but i failed failed it i have a hesitation to start it again but after hearing this i strongly recommend all the students including me to give a trial on it <laughs> yeah maybe yeah. the first two second times we have a problem yeah, first first two three times yeah. people <laughs> might fail and also we have a lot of stigma around it and also we have a fear of inserting something into <laughs> so that fear if we if we can tackle that and you know try it two three times and after using it you won't switch back to sanitary pads i assure you that yeah yeah so definitely we will think it think about it seriously uh, starting the awareness is the first thing the basic thing then uh, maybe it will take some time because we have to give yeah, awareness we have to reduce that hesitation yeah. thing in uh, girls mind yeah yeah so these things won't happen so at least two three weeks of training and then assuring people people should be confident exactly. enough to switch and uh, yeah yeah that takes time thank you anjali any other questions i don't think so okay. uh, i have, have a question ma'am i have a question yes, yes. uh anjali i have a, a, a you have mentioned about the e charka and all right the thing is that when you mention about it only we getting to know about those initiatives right and uh, usually when a product is launched especially when a startup or something they will uh, try to promote it through the influencers and usually everyone getting influenced uh, through the influencers tactics and all but uh, we never see any celebrities uh, so are coming up or influencer coming up and uh, promoting much of the uh, this uh, recycle uh, recycle products uh, right so uh, if if in case if they get to know about more uh, that more, more awareness has to be there uh, regarding this pr uh, products are only uh, people will try to uh, you know uh, make it a try give it a try on um, purchasing <clears throat> those so what's your opinion about it so uh, recharka is actually very famous in mumbai uh, and in pune in maharashtra and a lot of celebrities so uh, so it's it's three, uh, started recently i guess 3 uh, 4 years ago so it's still scaling up and recently they have participated in many events so i can hear my echo. uh shriyam is can you can you mute your mic thank you yeah so uh, recently a, um, there are, there has been a lot of uh, you know social media events about recharka uh, a lot of bollywood actors like even aishwarya rai had commented on their effort uh, recently so it's i think it's it's just the community where um, uh, certain people subscribe to certain you know kind of news and certain people don't so within that community it's very popular and this is um, this is mainly recharka and all it developed recently and it's it's still on its way to scaling up right now it's not that large scaled up so the scaling up so as i mentioned scaling uh, the scaling up issue sustainability uh, affordability and profitability also comes into picture when when we think about these initiatives so maybe in the future with a lot of government initiatives also and also you know financial support i think these kind of we can see a lot of uh, initiatives as, such as this um, i'm not aware of anything in kerala uh, on like recharka 
eco curry is also i think uh, it's also based uh, somewhere around central or northern part of india uh, but i think with this as model we can certainly develop something like this in kerala also okay have you heard of urban trap uh, i mean green works it actually works um, i think uh, it's a calicut based uh, organization yeah that surprisingly we haven't heard much yes. about it even though there are you know some efforts but uh, we had some very uh, strong initiatives in the form of one i remember one called chandakari chanda is actually waste and mm. we created an icon of the chandakari is a, a woman who comes out of waste she uh, becomes the, uh, the 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 what shall you the icon of uh, Uh, many upcycle products so they would go to factories garment factories collect waste from there and create bags and other essentials out of that that's definitely one then we have uh, lakshmi men and you know who uh, has popularized things like uh, amumathiri and uh, mm -hmm. creating um, beds it's called sahaj uh, say say shayya shayya is a project they create uh, <coughs> Uh, beds out of uh, hospital waste. Oh. Yeah, so I mm -hmm. think there are there are a few, uh, you know, mm -hmm. instances. But probably it has to become yeah, yeah more recognized. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, using celebrities for uh, popularizing. You know, we can see a lot of plastic products being popularized using uh, celebrities. Why not the recycled? Uh, industry also can cannot why cannot it get popularized using the same principle maybe uh, in the future we can see that uh, we might be able to see that yeah actually it is kind of a contradicting thing that the same celebrity who is, uh, is promoting this plastic will be giving a message that you are not supposed to use the plastic <laughs> yeah. Yeah. i think with maggie and other um, uh, you know some 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 controversy had occurred there. industry and how can we educate this uh, uh, rag pickers because uh, they don't know how to be in hygiene or maintain that hygienic way to uh, you know pick that uh, rags and also uh, how can we just create uh, that awareness among them so they they itself have uh, their own uh, you know uh, a chain or an organization so as i said look uh, kabadi wala connect is an organization which which keeps in touch with them and they provide them training programs on how uh, important their health is also while providing the services and also they provide them with personal protective equipments so when they are going and picking uh, you know scraps out of this waste that it might include sharps etc so which which might um so there has been a lot of study conducted by csc delhi where a lot of scrap dealers have been injured and they are hunting for um, you know value products from these dump sites oh um, that has actually gen generated awareness in delhi within delhi on how important it is to address the issues faced by the, the informal sector so if we have a small community of informal sector within themselves they have a you know a, a way of interacting and if, if we can get into that loop and then we can if we can organize like community program we can also organize training events for them on how to Uh, how to ensure uh, safe and safe working conditions and how to be careful when they are picking up trash and how they can ensure that they are segregating uh, non recyclable and recycle they already know but if we can also provide them with you know formal training uh, that in actually india government is taking initiative to formalize the informal sector which is all coming along so this it's all at a nascent stage right now in the future we can i hope that we can see um, a lot of improvement in the sector okay thank you anjali i think it's time to move on uh, from this q and a session so noora yes ma'am thank you ma'am for the interactive section and also thank you bindu ma'am for joining with us last but not the least i call upon ms sriya suresh faculty of hrm and our beloved tutor to propose the vote of thanks
So good evening, one and all. Uh, I extend my gratitude to Ms. Anjali Raj uh, to take out time for giving the session on uh, the circular economy about plastics and how it is linked to the various SDG goals, the significance of informal sector and so on. Uh, thank you for giving such a fruitful session. Uh, finally, I thank Ms. Alina Joy, Head of Human Resource Management Department for organizing this evening session and uh, and also thank Bindu Ma'am for joining with us this, uh, this evening. And to all the beloved students who have uh, attended this session, uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And tomorrow yeah. we have another session on non, no poverty. And uh, Sister Gracie from South Sudan is going to join with us. So uh, Sister has an uh, NGO over there. Uh, she has been there for past uh, 24 years. By 1988, she was reached there. And uh, so many practices are going on uh, under her leadership over there. So I hope that it will be another exclusive session regarding this sustainable development goals and expecting all your presence. If the time allows, we do not please do come. Anjali, please do come. Uh, it will be an exclusive session, I think. The sister is actually too busy to take the calls and uh, uh, seeing these messages and all. But after getting to know about our this lecture series and our intention, she is ready to come and join with us. So I'm expecting all your presence tomorrow also. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Once again, thanks for inviting me. Yeah, sure, sure. It was really a great, a fruitful session, I would say. Uh, thank yeah, you so thank much. You. We'll keep in touch, definitely. Uh, in future, sure, sure. we will have an offline session when you come to Calicut. I think you are from Talashiri, right? Kannur. No, I'm from Vainad. You are from Vainari. Anyway, it is near to our place itself. So yeah. when you come to uh, uh, Kerala next time, please do come and visit our campus. Sure, sure. Thank okay. you. Have a good night. Yeah, yeah, good night. Good night to all of you. Thank you.